Episode 30. Roger Came to Fight for Blair. After a long while, Lucius flew down from the tree and carefully followed behind them. Since the trees were far apart in this part of the jungle, Lucius could clearly see the two of them from kilometers away with his sharp eagle eyes. The snake beast man let go of the female, then went to pick up firewood at an area that was more than 10 meters away from her. Now was his chance. Lucius quietly moved closer. When the snake beast man seemingly sensed something and stopped moving, he immediately spread his wings and rushed towards Blair. Now even Blair felt uncomfortable for some unknown reason. It felt as if she was being watched. Then Blair heard the sound of rushing wind behind her. She quickly turned around to see a black eagle fiercely charging towards her and instinctively stepped backward. Stephen instantly transformed into his full beast form and rushed to place himself between Blair and the black eagle. After Lucius was blocked, realizing that he couldn't save the female anymore, he switched to an offensive stance and furiously pecked at the snake's body with his hard beak. Stephen took a sharp blow and blood instantly splattered everywhere. However, he still managed to wrap his snake tail around Blair and quickly escape. Now, with a distance of tens of meters between them, the situation was stabilized. Knowing that he was no match for a beast man with four animal stripes, Lucius didn't continue pursuing them. Instead, he shook his wings and transformed into a tall man with an abnormally muscular chest. His body was naturally bare as well. Although he was shorter than Stephen, his physique was more manly. His dark eyes were as sharp as an eagle's. Stephen immediately used his snake tail to cover Blair's eyes. Blair's mouth twitched. What was he covering her eyes for? I'm already used to seeing naked men, okay? Blair's long eyelashes brushed against the snake tail as she blinked. She thought, so this eagle is a beast man too. Is he the eagle who got bitten by Stephen while trying to save me a month ago? It was a pity. If she'd known earlier, she would have pounced on him. However, after seeing how nervous the snake wrapped around her was, Blair suddenly couldn't bear to make him upset. Give her to me, Lucius suddenly demanded. His voice was so calm that it sounded robotic. Otherwise, I'll kill her. Stephen immediately tightened his hold on Blair. Blair's eyes widened in shock. What? The Eagle Man wants to kill me? Why? Is he trying to scare Stephen? Before long, Lucius gave her a very convincing answer. The honorable reputation of an eagle cannot be damaged. I can only succeed in my mission, not fail. If the female is dead, everyone will simply think that you killed her, and it will have nothing to do with me. The murderous look in Stephen's eyes was palpable as he arched his body and prepared to attack. Anyone who threatened Snow had to die. Blair was dumbfounded. Saving her is hard, but killing her is a piece of cake. Lucius then transformed back into beast form. Seeing that Lucius was about to leave, Stephen quickly pounced on him. But Lucius safely escaped from the snake's fangs, as there was some distance between them and he had fast reflexes. Stephen's eyes darkened with anger as he watched the eagle fly away. His eyes were so red that it seemed like blood would drip from them. Blair walked over and looked up at him. He was five meters tall when he straightened his body. You're bleeding. Stephen looked down at Blair as his upper body transformed into human form. He then reached out and pulled her into a tight hug. Don't leave me. Nothing must happen to you. Okay. Blair nodded in Stephen's arms. Stephen knew that the Eagle Beast Man meant what he said. The Eagle Tribe was special. According to legend, there were no females in the Sky City where they lived. Once the Eagle Beastmen reached adulthood, they would leave the tribe and travel the world to find a mate. Their reputation was especially important to them. They thought that it was an important criterion to attract females. He could really kill Snow. Lucius flew high up in the air, looking down at the undulating stretch of forest below. A stream of black smoke rose from the forest. Although there was wind, the smoke didn't dissipate. It was clearly a smoke signal. Lucius looked at it for a while before flying toward it. 
At the area where the black smoke rose, a young leopard that seemed to have just turned of age kept on adding things to the fire. Lucius rested on a branch nearby, looked around, transformed to his human form, and said, You're alone? Your father didn't come? Roger immediately looked up and said agitatedly, I finally found you. My father hasn't returned to the city yet. Have you found where Blair is? Roger was still holding on to animal manure that he was burning. No one knew how long it had been since he had rested, and he was in a bad state, feeling very tired. However, his eyes were still very spirited when he looked towards Lucius. I came here following the signs you've made on the way. How is it? Have you found Blair's traces? Roger asked anxiously. Lucius didn't hide the disappointment in his eyes. He stood upright on the branch and said, I did. They were resting by the river earlier. You'll be able to find their scent if you follow along the river. But I advise you not to go. Even if you go, you'll just be courting death. But I have a way to save your female. Roger was delighted and asked, What method is it? I'll go with you. Lucius took a look at the two animal stripes on Roger's face, then emotionlessly said, No need. After saying that, Lucius took on his eagle form and flew away. He couldn't rely on the leopard tribe, so he could only proceed to his last resort. Roger was so angry that he gritted his teeth. Reclusive eagle tribe, it's no wonder no females want you. Roger didn't pay any heed to Lucius's advice and immediately started to search for the water source. A beast tide had taken place in the area. He must protect Blair. Although the injury on Stephen's chest wasn't lethal, the wound was very deep. Blair helped him to take care of his wound. The wound started to recover after half a day and the opening shrank in size. Blair was shocked by the snake beast man's recovery rate. Based on this rate, he'd take at most two days to completely recover. The sky gradually turned dark. Stephen carried Blair up a stone mountain and rested at the gap between two boulders. You'll have to put up with this for tonight. With these huge boulders as protection, the huge beasts won't be able to dash in. Stephen looked at Blair and said apologetically, Safety's first. Blair waved her hand, not minding it. She then started to clean up a spot to sleep. A beast howl rang out not far away, and Blair found it familiar for some reason. She ran to the gap and looked out. Stephen swung his tail and brought Blair back. Wearing a dark expression, he crawled out of the crack. Stephen? Blair looked at Stephen, not understanding what was going on. Why did he suddenly become angry? She wasn't thinking of escaping. Blair, it's me! Seeing that Blair was pulled away by the snake beast man, Roger, in rage, jumped down from the tree, took on his human form, and shouted loudly. Blair's eyes lit up, and she put up a struggle intensely, managing to slip out from Stephen's binding. A yellow-haired young man stood several hundred meters away, his golden eyes shining brightly. At the instant he saw Blair, his eyes became even brighter. Roger! Blair called out in delight and uncontrollably ran towards him. Stephen wrapped her up with his tail once again, bringing her into his arms and hugging her with a strong feeling of possession. The yellow hair on Roger's head instantly stood up, and he glared at the snake beast man with his golden eyes, releasing a deep growl from his throat. Stephen locked eyes with Roger and said coldly, I should have killed you back then.